Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. The Outsiders Perspective with the Maestro and Coriel on this Sunday afternoon. We're a little early this time. We That's right. Be, uh, so we get it on out today. Right? We just right. before good. everybody get tired, go to bed. That's right. Start watching all these random award shows that we are usually unaware of until the last minute. Right. Why don't we give it to the people, you know, sooner so they can see? Your niggas got company. I forgot, so I gotta, I gotta get this out the way. <laughs> That's what this was. Well, the real reason that this. <laughs> ah. We had to do this early because. <laughs> It's all right. Nothing's wrong. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> um, so we're a little more, a little more, uh, a little more casual, a little less, I guess, structured in the show today. We just gonna kind of free ball it, see what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kept saying for the longest time that I was gonna come up with like a standard intro to always say to make sure I touched all the points and stuff. Yeah. But I just never did. Well, yeah. Uh, so since we're just freestyling, mm-hmm. uh, you can catch all the preview shows on Spotify. Search HLX Radio. I mean, we here. Uh, you can also catch us if you have an app, if you want to listen to your on your phone on the go. Download Radio Online, the app, and search HLX Radio. You can listen to us there as well. And you can always listen live on HLXMagazine.com. So we here. Um, so, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how you feeling? How, how how's the weekend treating you? How you how's you how you living out here? Weekend's good. I didn't have to work this weekend. So I just been chilling. I had to go to my little cousin's birthday thing. She turned one. Oh, happy well, birthday. my little cousin baby birthday thing. <laughs> we old now. Oh my Love. god! Everybody having babies, getting married. It's alright. Well, not me. <laughs> and I had I had to <laughs> tell my, I had to tell my grandma that yesterday. Like, oh, you got this. So when are you? Uh, ah, you got that? About that. Yeah. <laughs> it might be a little while. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening now. Or Ever. It's just not, oh. Ever, ever. That's a new development. Because I went to Florida to visit my <laughs> grandfather. And not to put all the you know, business yeah, out. Yeah. But I have never seen a marriage work in my family. So, fuck it. Not You're not going to, uh, as they say, break the cycle? Gonna... It's not just up to me. <clears throat> Two I mean, people get I mean, yeah, it's up to you married. and the person. Yeah, It's too much. Mm-mm. I don't trust but you can still trust, have kids uh-huh. and just not get married. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have children. That's Don't get it fucked about. up. Talk about kids. But in terms of oh, okay. getting married and okay. sharing my shit with... No. <laughs> fuck that. Hell no. No. What about marrying Nuh-uh. with a prenup? Well, prenup, maybe. Because then Potentially. if you leave, you just... We already agree. You take what you take and yeah. the rest of the shit is mine. But apparently, not everybody likes that. Because it shows that you don't trust them or whatever. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I'm on. I'm. I'm still young, so I don't know. But it's looking like niggas gonna be single for the rest of their life. <laughs> I feel like, as you said, it's a little early to call we'll for see. the rest of your life. But check yeah. back in ten years. Check back in ten years. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll uh, bookmark this episode yep. uh, and check back. Uh, so, what you want to? Did you? Is there anything on your mind? Anything you want to get into? Um, um, show it all. Um. Hmm. I know I wanted to try to figure out because I know we used to do that back like in the early days. We try mm-hmm. to figure out how to get the money talk back in there. Some type of either not investment, but some type. Well, of here's the thing: finance something. It's hard to talk about finance with people because they don't care about it. So you and yeah. the thing is, it's simple, but you try to break it down to people, they make it seem like you're speaking another language. So I don't know how to make it relatable to to people to a point that people care because mm-hmm. people don't like saving money. People work hard and they want to spend their money. And so it's kind of hard to, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't, I don't really know. All, all I can really say is your pension and social <laughs> security ain't going to be there <laughs> when it's about that time. When and you get to that, you know, age. not really getting pensions no more for exactly. real. Most of y'all getting 401ks, which is based on whatever the value of the stock market is. So exactly. if the stock market is to crash or go down, all that shit is irrelevant. If you got a pension, that's different because you got that's money that's set that you're gonna get. Yeah, but, but we're not gonna get but it. Most probably. people not getting pensions anymore. It's all for in one game. So But you know, whatever. <laughs> <That's a note. laughs> Moving on, since y'all don't care about your finances and your future. Right. Whatever. Cause back when we we would <laughs> you could see this uh, analytics, we would have a bunch of views at the beginning and then yeah. once you start talking about money, <laughs> <laughs> everybody just dropped off. It's the dangerous <laughs> thing. I don't understand. But whatever. My shit straight. Yes, we are good over mm-hmm. here. Uh, it's been a lot of craziness happening. We mm-hmm. got to talk about this, uh, this ice cream shit. I didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> I was I was out of town and I oh, found yeah, out about it when like I got gone. back. I mm-hmm. think it was like right as you left to like this might have been the same day that afternoon. Mm-hmm. I think the first case I think was in a Walmart, 
and it was some some black girl and her friend mm. decided to go to the ice cream aisle, pick up a thing of bluebell, mm. and her friend was recording her. She took the top off the bluebell, licked it, put the top back on, and put it back in the freezer for someone else to potentially buy later. Mm. And they thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world. They were quickly identified <laughs> and charged. <laughs> and now, I don't know if they charged the guy, actually, that was recording her. I think it was just her. Okay. But she got charged with a felony, which I think was tampering with uh, consumer products or something like that. It was mm-hmm. a charge. Mm-hmm. And she could face anywhere between 2 and 20 years in That's prison. That's a big jump. <laughs> Two between two and, and 20. 20 so anywhere in between that is the potential she, for this you better pray. <laughs> she better pray she get community service or something mm-hmm. but she's facing a felony right now wow so after she got caught which was quickly it would happen monday i think by like tuesday wednesday they knew who she was and she was charged mm-hmm. people was already copying it so then you got people uh licking other ice cream i see somebody scoop their hand in one mm-hmm. lick it put it back in there somebody took the top off listerine Drink it, spit it back in the bottle, put it in there. Like, now people just out of hand, like, eating stuff in the store and putting it back. I don't know what to say. I mean, we in, I mean, mind you, I mean, people do crazy things for uh, attention. attention. I'm pretty sure they've always done. People kill people for attention. So, true. I mean, I, I don't I don't really know what to say about that, but I got to I gotta double check everything now. <laughs> like, I got to go to the back of every aisle <laughs> now, get all the fresh shit out of the way, get to the very back. Because oh, I don't trust old now. It'd be the push, kept pushing back. Yeah, I don't think one joint was like a, it was like a CVS or something. They had like a lock on the freezer, like they had like a butt lock, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, if you want ice cream, please see manager for assistance. <laughs> please see cashier. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. It's like when you had to go buy video games and you had to get the person mm-hmm. to unlock. You had to get somebody to get a key to unlock the freezer so mm-hmm. you can get ice cream now. Well. So now all our food is going to be behind a lock. And grocery shopping is going to take 10 times as long because you got to get each shit unlocked by somebody before you can put it in your cart. See how people ruin things for everybody else? It's like, come on, son. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, people hate shopping enough as it is. Tell me Y'all about it. Y'all doing all this foolishness. Oh, well. Foolishness. Mm-mm-mm. All right, what else we got here? And. Another controversy. There's a lot of like people being upset (laughs) over the past couple days. Mm -hmm. The Little Mermaid, a fictional (laughs) character in the Disney universe, Mm -hmm. uh, who is drawn in the cartoons as obviously Caucasian looking. Mm -hmm. Caucasian looking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They had got a black person to play her in the live because Disney's doing all this shit live now they got the live Lion King they're doing the live Mulan live Aladdin they're doing the live Little Mermaid that sounds cheaper <laughs> than doing a whole cartoon <laughs> actually mm. probably for animation and effects mm-hmm. and all that it might be depending on you know basically they, they're trying to turn all these movies out yeah, it real, all makes sense real mm-hmm. quick <clears throat> um, so they got what's in the hey, hey, is it Haley Bailey <laughs> Haley <laughs> Bailey that's <laughs> I, I think it begins with a B, B A I L E Y, something like that. Okay, I hope but, her name ain't Haley Bailey. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I hope to God. It's pretty close to that. Actually. <laughs> it's pretty. I know her initials are H B. It's oh. like Haley Bailey or something like that. Okay. But anyway, they got her, and she's in the group that signed to Beyonce, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they got her to play Ariel, the main, the mermaid, mm-hmm. and white people are furious. Mm. They were like, "How? How can you white? Like they're like claiming like, no, mermaids are white." So she cannot be, she cannot play this. And everybody's like, uh, mermaids are not real. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you know what, what ethnicity, ethnicity they are? Yeah. Like it's a fish. I'm, yeah. I don't, I don't understand that part. I don't, and are, are white people actually mad? Or are we saying that? They're, there are like mad? private people are taking screenshots. There was like a private Facebook group mm-hmm. called like Christians for little mermaid or some weird shit like that. Mm-hmm. And some white person like added themselves and was like just to see what it was mm-hmm. so they could like expose the pictures they were seeing. <laughs> so it was like all types of people drawing her like because I think on one of the pictures is like her on a rock mm-hmm. with her tail where they like replaced the rock with a watermelon. Of course. And did. did all types of shit like that. And like mad people comment and then posting memes and mm-hmm. like how could they make her black? I'm not letting my kid watch this. I will never let them grow up and see a mermaid that doesn't listen. Like people are upset. White people are angry. Wow. Well. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that either. Um, wasn't because I, I know I saw the whole, I guess, comparison with the Brandy Cinder, Cinderella, Cinderella thing. Mm-hmm. Was there a big backlash with that too? 
I don't. That, I was that little. I, I don't remember. remember. Yeah. I mean, also, social media wasn't as. So here's here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking social media amplifies things. Oh, absolutely. Right? So I'm not. I'm pretty sure there were people who were upset about Brandy being. Yeah, we just couldn't hear him, but we couldn't see him. We couldn't hear him. So it's like you know whatever. And did it seem more peaceful then? Did peaceful? Did it seem like in terms of race relations, other than like the Rodney King shit, of course, and all that <laughs> kind of thing? But it seemed like things were a little bit more. At least when I was little. A little bit more cool, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. We didn't get into them type of arguments and debates. I didn't, like you said, I don't think I saw much. Yeah, and if there was, it wasn't near us. And I think that's what social media does. Social media, it takes people who have thoughts in isolation mm -hmm. and lets them look like one big group. Yeah. Because it's probably no one in our like 25 mile radius that is upset about this. Mm. But it's one person here one person in north carolina somewhere and all these one people used to just be alone right so they just kept their fucking mouth shut right now they get to find each other and look like one big ass yeah. group of people so they feel bigger hmm so it yeah. allows them to amplify that's how you get all those weird ass shit like the people who think the earth is flat and shit yeah. there used to be one crazy nigga that we left alone like he think the earth is flat don't talk to him right but now he found the other nigga <laughs> on the other side so now it's like ah oh, you know what this is like, i think what? that's that's what exactly that's exactly where we are and that's that's unfortunate i think that's one of the byproducts of internet access yeah. is you know and i i said this a long time ago social media ruined everything social media ruined music it ruined movies it ruined all sorts, all sorts of industries. Like you can't say nothing now. We are so like. Imagine white chicks coming out <laughs> today. Like <laughs> it's so many movies. Like, just period. That yeah. if they came out now, it would be so problematic. Like mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah. No, don't do that. So or if you read as you an actor, you get the script. Like nigga, I'm not acting mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. like, That's why I'm I'm, I'm I'm so confused as to why people get so offended about things. Like we grew up on South Park and Family Guy and those types of cartoons. And those things are still on. Right? And they're still on. I think because they're like established though. Like at this point, we understand like this is what South Park is. It's been this way for however many years mm -hmm. since it's been around for forever, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of that. So we just kind of let it rock. But anything new. Yeah. It's like nah, you gotta live by the today's standards. Well, I it's exhausting. This is me being a black male. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Like, oh, it's how we always it upset about someone? Like, I feel like remember how we always say we took the power out the word nigga. <laughs> Can we take the power out of others, other shit Social too? Because I'm 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 sick of I'm sick of going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, <laughs> we'll be back. Hmm. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, from that quick break. This is The Outside of Suspected with the Maestro and Corey L. <laughs> I love that fucking song. That's my sh man. Shout out to our boy, Vice Versa, for the music. Uh, so we, uh, we was just talking about the exhaustion of, of being a black man in America, right? Okay. In relation to social media. Okay. So with that, I was thinking about something of how how social media is so big also it's somewhat of an isolation and depending on who you follow what you see right because mm -hmm. to bring up another issue uh the Lil Nas X coming out mm -hmm. uh which I saw and for the most part I think I mean for the most part everything I saw on my timeline while I was scrolling like nobody either nobody gave a shit or they were like good for you for coming out it was all positivity and energy. So I saw that. I was like, cool. Then I checked back and I saw a bunch of people being mad at people who were not happy. I never saw the people who were saying the reckless shit. Yeah. I saw people going, good for you. Then I saw people go, how dare you not be happy for him? So I oh, was I like, see what you're saying. I was, yeah. like, well, I was like, huh? I was yeah. like, like legitimately that, right? like I didn't see nobody <laughs> upset. <laughs> yeah. Like I was legitimately confused for a second because I checked because I'm not on all day, but I checked early. Like, oh, he came out. He posted the like the close up of the album cover. Like the rainbow was there. Y'all didn't see. It I was like, oh, okay, cool. It mm -hmm. was in there. So I people, good for you. Good for coming out. Strong black man. Cool. I checked back later and it was like, if you don't fuck with Lil Nas X now, you a bitch because it's, I was like, what the fuck is <laughs> you a bitch? <laughs> Oh, it's, oh, oh man. you like Old Town Road before, but now you don't like it because he came out? How yeah. dare you? And I'm like, 
Well, who said that? Like, yeah, I think it just like goes. I to missed the negative part. I saw the good, and then reaction to the bad to the point where I was confused. Yeah, and I was like, huh? So I'm pretty sure there was way more positivity than negativity. Right. But people zoned but in on yeah, the negativity. All the people who were on my positive timeline switched from that to now they defending mm. the few, like you said, the few small people that's angry. Right. right. So I went from like, huh, to what? Yeah. This is this is where we are, and this ex- is exhausting. It is exhausting. We we make small things big things for no reason. And we bring you bring more attention to it. Yep. Like if no one that was all all the positive stuff that if no one had done that and they had they had stayed there and no one responded to the negativity, I honestly would have never thought there was Speaking of Lil Nas X, did you see the clip where he was on like BBC or something? He was like, you know, talking about it. Mm-hmm. And after his interview was over, oh, you he know, walked in front he, of the walked, <laughs> he walked across the camera <laughs> and it was like what the fuck are you doing? Like, like, they look so way. offended. And he walked back across <laughs> the stage. Oh, I didn't know he walked back. He walked back to his seat. <laughs> and he was like, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I saw him retweet. I didn't know. I guess I didn't watch the whole clip. I saw him walk by once. And they were like, mm. I didn't know he walked. Back. I didn't know that was a sin like that. They were upset. Well, they were angry. The people what on the, the couch were like, what the? F-? Right. <laughs> How dare you? Like, it's like shit. My, in my light. Yeah. But yeah, man, I don't know. We just people people tend to amplify negative things because people, you know what I've I've noticed too. Controversy is like when you think about like all the big, all the biggest names in in music and like in the pop world back in the you know eighties, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, Janet. They all had something that was controversial about them. They had people talking. They were it's either you loved them or it was kind of like you couldn't get past this or you couldn't get past that. Madonna mm. and Jenner was like the over sexualization, yeah. blah blah blah. And Prince was supposedly gay, and Prince was this, and Prince was that, and people pretty much loved Michael. So I can't even. Yeah, my, they thought he was Jesus. Yeah, so, <laughs> so that, <laughs> they but, prayed to him. Yeah, right, so. but even still, he did. He he became more controversial as time went on. Right, right. But that's when we heard the most from him and about him was during the most controversial moments in his life. It's almost yeah, like right. it defined his whole career. And that's how we are as an American society. I'm pretty sure it's like that in other, in other places. Mm-hmm. But I know we tend to like, we just, we, we love controversy. We like going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It also goes back, I ain't going to say no names, but we know but we know people who don't know how to form their own opinions. Oh, so yeah. the only thing, so the best they know how to do is listen to your opinion and do the opposite. Oh, yeah. Because it makes them feel like they're... They're contrarian. Yeah, so it makes them feel like they're more, I guess, intelligent than they actually are. Because it isn't hard... It gets to be against the grain and all that. Yeah, kind of it isn't hard for me to hear what you say and just say the opposite. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> right. Like, like, based off what? <laughs> right. So I, it, we're, we're, in weird, we're in weird times. And I don't know if it's always been like this, but I know it's amplified now because of the internet. I think is that I think is that these people have always been there, but they're so few and far between that yeah. they just kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. But now that they can all talk to each other on face private Facebook groups, yeah. that they feel empowered now. Yeah. But fuck uh, em. and exactly because yep. we got guns too. <laughs> <laughs> that's the phrase of the year. That's that's the one right there. <laughs> uh, so we can get into some music because when the la- his last album came out, we both. Huge fans. Mm-hmm. This is uh, Jaden Smith. This was not the last one because he had like some little mixtape shit in between. But this was when he did Sire. Mm-hmm. We both both highly highly reviewed that album. Yeah. Thought it was really good. Yes, we did. He did the little mixtape weird in between shit. We was like, mm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But this is in between. We'll wait until uh, Eris come out. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. Eris c- finally came out. We listened to it a little early, a couple of hours ago. We did not make it through the whole thing. We got a little bit over halfway through. We got to like 10 or 11 mm-hmm. out of the 17 from the main part of the album. Mm-hmm. Uh, similar setup at the beginning for uh, Sire. He had the B-L-U-E, which was basically one song broken into four parts to spell it out. For this one, he did Pink, so P-I-N-K. Mm-hmm. How did you feel about this one is are you still riding the, the wave or is the well, how you feeling i don't like when people do things twice <laughs> that annoys me well, it was, i think it was kind of implied though because it, this is just the reverse i hate when people do the, things twice yeah. i don't even like the concept of it i don't like the concept of making an album and then doing it again i don't like that so no all. sequel albums no if you're gonna make a sequel take me somewhere else 
don't do what you did before. That's fair. Because I could just listen to the the last <laughs> one. So I'm immediately. I mean, I'm already gonna compare it to the first one anyway. Because it's literally the same. Right. But if backwards. you make another one, it's like I I don't need it. I so I listened to Pink, and it had it had moments on it, but like the first one did. Like when the w- right, when the beat come in, fire hard. All right, whatever. But <laughs> right, my main whatever. thing is. Jaden, what are you talking about? You're not talking about Honestly, anything. Honestly, half the time I can't hear what like his voice. Like so I don't really understand what he's saying. It just sounds sonically cool mixed in with everything else. Right. So listening to that whole album, the production was was de- it was good, you, you know what I mean? Mm. But I feel like this is Will Smith's son. And I hate to bring Will up, but <laughs> this is Will Smith's son. Will Smith is a billionaire now? Has he has he made he's a billion yet? Close, if not. He's almost there. So you you have the capability of having the greatest producers ever in the world produce your son shit. Or your son has the connection. Oh, he can do it himself. So it's yeah, like, yeah. Sure. He don't need his dad. So it's just like, I, if you already got fire production because you have the money to be able to afford it, you better bring something to the table that makes me, I guess that sells you, you know, to me. Because your producers are great, but what right. are you doing? But what are you doing? Right. And I don't feel like he's really doing much of anything. I feel like this is just a person who has money and has the resources to create an album. But he, there's no there's no real creativity here. Well, do there's you nothing. think he is he the one like like formulating these, like telling the producers what he wants to hear and fine tuning it? Or you think producers just giving him beats and he just like doing whatever to him? I'm not I feel like he kind of has to be up. The way some of this stuff is going, he has to be a part of the It's hard to say creative because process right because I'm not in the studio with him. I'm yeah. not I'm not sure. I I haven't seen any like behind the scenes things or how he I'm, creates and all that nah, kind of thing. Like but that. just him, I like from what I'm hearing, it's just like I'm not impressed. It just sounds like I mean, I could literally we could go to the kids downstairs, <laughs> make beats and give them beats and tell them rap. Grab I feel that, like it would sound just like that. Grab that little nigga with the trombone. Yes, and that's like- a there's a nigga that plays trombone every fucking Saturday. I guarantee. <laughs> Throw him on there. Yes, I grab the sax and we out. This is like, what do you bring into the table? And it's just like that. That's what frustrates me about him, and that's what made me not care about this one. And it just sounded like a bunch of noise. It was just really loud. And just There's a, a lot of distortion. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff going and on. And then he on. breaks into this, like this 90 second, like full rock metal beat yeah, thing. You know, and I was whatever. Like, cool. Mm. But I, yeah, so nah. Mm-mm. <laughs> just nah. Nah. <clears throat> so nah. where do we put it? Because at first we were like, when Sire came out, we was like, oh, he might be a problem in a couple of years when he figure out what he's talking about. Does he still have that? Or we is he he losing that window of. I being mean, next up or whatever, however you want to. Put I hate it. that phrase. Yeah, I don't know how else to word it. But uh, is he <laughs> losing his window to sh- prove to people that he can be more than Will Smith's son? No, he has not. He he hasn't proven that to me. Yet. I mean, but is he hasn't proven it yet? But I'm saying, how long? How much longer are we giving him to do that? How much long? Oh, I'm done. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, done. Are you done. I mean, I saw that he had dropped. See, here's the thing, too. Don't give me teaser things because you're going to you're going to exhaust me. So after Sire, he had already put like two projects out yeah, he did, in between this and that. He did he did Sire again. He did Sire the electric version, okay. which was Sire, but like live acoustic guitar stuff. It was weird, right? Which I didn't like, but I did listen to it when I saw it because I was still hype still off, hype of, off of Sire. Sire. But when you give me that, and I'm like, oh, all right, well, I, I guess I'm just waiting for. Uh, the joy, Paris. right? And then he put another one out, the Summer Tapes Volume One or something. Like Didn't that. like that one either. <laughs> so by that point, I'm like, well, you done All you done right. shown me you what you're capable two of. Two albums in between this right. one. So I feel like these teaser things don't always help people. I know that you but know I'm it's going. more so about just putting product out. It's more so about just having something so that people don't forget you and all that kind of thing. But I don't think I would forget. I think that if he were to just not have those other two and then drop this one, I would have given this one a maybe a better chance. I've only listened to this once. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really being fair to him. But he's not being fair to me either <laughs> because he's, he's giving me two other mediocre throwaway projects. Yeah, and that's the difference between... That's the thing. Like, teasers are okay, but I consider a teaser like 
a 30 second like promo video or something yeah. he dropped two albums don't give like, me that's not a album don't yeah. tease me your album with two other albums but that's not a teaser those are projects i would love themselves. to know who started that bullshit. like that's not a teaser that i really would love to know who started the whole concept of create of creating t te- like i guess it's the whole idea of mixtapes that people would drop mixtapes leading up to an actual release but these mixtapes would be mixtapes they would be like remixes and things oh, like, and oh things just like somebody that. else beat and you just rap those right quick but, but mixtapes turned music. into albums and it's like so this is you, all original music yeah it's like well you just dropped an album it's <laughs> like i don't i don't understand so i feel like it's like chance chance technically says he don't have an album yet this one is about to come out this month is his first album oh well, as far as I'm concerned, he's got three of them. By, by <laughs> and he won a Grammy off the last yeah. one. But he's like, no, that was a mixtape. This this one now, that he's, I think it's coming out in July this month. This is on his, to him, this is his first album. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> that's not a that's not a mixtape, Chance. Period. <laughs> I'm moving on. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Shit. What is this? And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, the Outsiders Perspective with the Maestro and Corey L. Uh, so, who was I had something that I was going to consider? Because you talked about how, uh, I guess, the idea that people have is just they just want to have something, like projects to put out. They just want to have music out. Because mm-hmm. I was listening to uh, Joe Budden did a pull-up mm-hmm. with Russ. Mm-hmm. And Russ was talking about something kind of similar to the idea of why he put out so much music when nobody knew who he was. He put out like mad songs. I think he's did for almost a full year. He put out a song every week mm. and he was putting out like projects in between that too. Like before he ever got signed or people start caring about his music or whatever. Mm. So his philosophy behind that was that <clears throat> if someone, if you put out a song and it actually catches and you get a little buzz and people like it, they're going to, in return go look for you mm. so it's like oh let me i like this song let me see what else you got but if you only got like one other song to listen to it's like oh well i got this other song that's it whereas if you go if you find a person who you like that one song you go look and they have a catalog and you have like 10 projects to sort through now the chances of you becoming like a fan or core fan are increased because you got you don't just have this one other song you can listen to me for the next week because you got all this backlog of music to go through okay so that was his idea like even when he won't pop and no one was listening he was just so when you do find me it's not just this one track you got the past year of music to go through or however long but here's my thing i've listened to a lot of russ's music Mm -hmm. and i don't like it (laughs) because it's a lot of the same thing it's a lot like he he does the, he was doing the same thing over and over and over and over again so it's just like i, I mean people have to get tired of that like i know that his last joint what was it zoo oh. exactly because it's like i mean he but i think he dropped his last, go last platinum year. and he does fest he sells out concerts that's not he the sells same out thing. shows though that's not the <laughs> same Thing. I'm trying to tell you, Russ cannot come to fucking Richmond. Russ cannot come to where well, he Raleigh. Goes to specific places. He, he can go to L. A. He can go. He can go to New York. Well, he I can go to Canada. Stadium Fine, I'm not. You. I'm, I'm fine not saying. Now listen, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying this to necessarily shit on Russ. What I'm saying is that this is where we are now. Where it's just like, look, first that there are people who like Russ's music, right? Mm-hmm. But look back at his last album, right? Mm-hmm. It don't matter how many songs he put out last and all all that kind of thing. People get tired of you. And if you're not putting out quality shit, if people don't get excited, if people feel like, oh, well, yeah, it's Rush Drop something, but we know what that's going to sound like. <laughs> when it gets to that point, it's just like, how how is that long term going to benefit? Now, mind you, he can probably gig for the rest of his life. Listen, that's what he make most of his money. And right. Like every time he do an event or stadium or whatever, it's right. sold out. But he's but he's doing something that a lot of us can do that are all, we are already doing. So it's just like, but he's just doing, I guess, on a bigger mm-hmm. scale because yeah. he has like the label money behind him now, that kind of thing. But I feel like with all the with all the resources that he has, he should be doing way more than what he's doing. That's what I really do. That's what I really do believe because there are people yeah. who don't have deals that are doing what he's doing and even more. So 
fuck it. I don't. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to hear that. I don't. I don't see. Especially, I don't see how that benefits me. Like I love Anderson Pack, but if he dropped a song every week, I'm not listening it to sound that. Sound like the one from last week, right? Like I, I'm not. I'm not listening. I, I'm not going to care. Ooh. And a lot of that stuff that was on his first album was stuff that he had already put out. But he just comprised in, into on, yeah. into one thing. And I'm pretty sure his fan base supported it. You know, I already heard that though. Right. And then, you know, the algorithms probably made so that people who didn't know who he was initially, then they started. And then he had a label behind him. He was, they was pushing that. So it's like he had a lot of these things. But he didn't do it twice. He did it one time when he was at that perfect moment. Then he dropped the next one. With all new stuff on it, and it was basically just his just his fan base that listened to it because you you said you didn't even know that it it was out. Which so one? exactly for Anderson exactly. Pat? I listened to his last. No, album. I'm talking about Russ. Talking oh, about Russ. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I know Anderson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, because I'm not saying I'm not like a huge Russ fan. I didn't say it in that, but that was kind of I guess if y'all were talking here, that would have been his response to what. You said. Well, that would be my response to him. <laughs> and then fuck out of here. He responded to that too, and <laughs> saying, "If you don't, if you don't like it, who cares? There's a group that does, and they're the ones that buy that's the tickets. True. That's true. They're the why, ones that buy the tickets, and that's true. Rich. That's why I get to say what I want to say <laughs> because it don't it don't matter what I feel, but this is what I feel. So I I said it, and you still gigging, you still doing stuff. More more power to you. I just don't fucking like it. That's why. <laughs> That's all I got to say about it. It ain't for me. So you putting out music every, every week, showing me work ethic and all that kind of stuff. I mean, fine. I get it. Work ethic is important, definitely, so that you important. can go and you can work hard for these labels. So you can go <laughs> and work in the <laughs> studio day labels. in, day out, so they can have your... And I, mean, I think he does own a lot of his songs. Though. He owns all He owns like, all of his you know, masters and, and all that. That's what I'm saying, too. So, like, for the first stuff he did years ago mm-hmm. because he owned all of that mm-hmm. as that shit started to get more popular as he got popular mm-hmm. he started getting royalties from songs he had done like six bars years ago wonderful love it but i don't <laughs> like your music that's it this is that's all it look this is my show this is my podcast if you ask me God how damn. i feel i'm gonna tell you how i feel shit on them niggas niggas don't like my my music either but guess what Ooh. i don't care huh who thank you thank you for that <laughs> i mean there are people who, who, don't, who don't <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> But yeah, there are people, you know, not everybody gonna like what you what you do. That's so true, fine. That's but I don't like what he does. Period. Well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull that up five years from now. <laughs> See who won. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh there was a, another album that I had here, but we didn't get a chance to listen to it. It was the uh what was it Dream the Dreamville album? The what was it called? Revenge of the Dreamers Volume 3 All right. Which I didn't know There had been another two That came out before this one Okay Yeah me either <laughs> but, but that happened They also did a uh, Like a documentary Like a 30 minute Dreamville movie Or something like that Where they show Behind the scenes And mm-hmm. all the different artists On Dreamville And what they do And stuff like that mm-hmm. So That's there for those Who are into that Let's see I'm scrolling through Wrap up now To see what See what they talk about on there, and that's J Cole's label. J Cole, yeah, Dreamville is J Cole, okay. so he's on it. J I D. We don't that endorse that. That was by accident. <laughs> that was accident. J I D. Boss, mm-hmm. uh, Ari Linux. It was a bunch of other people that I Erica had never Badu. heard of. <laughs> she is not Erica Badu. <laughs> There's only one Erica Badu. I knew you was playing Erica Badu when you when you played her. Well, one song I was, and you was like, oh. "See, she sounded like Erica Badu." Was like, "Cause that is Erica Badu, nigga." <laughs> you got mad at Erica Badu for being uh, Erica Badu. <laughs> I thought it was Ari. I'm sorry. No, that was the original. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, Nas wow. put out an album. I forgot. The Lost Tapes too. This is the album that he wanted to put out when Kanye was doing that seven track bullshit that he didn't like. <laughs> so he was like, fuck that. This is the real album. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Notice how when we start talking about music, I don't care no more. It's the craziest thing. I don't like I don't like music no more. But that's the stuff that one we haven't heard and I'm just kind of scrolling through. Let's I heard Jade's today. I don't care about his shit either. Oh yeah, that whole that uh what was the the Chris Brown joint where he said he like Black bitches with nice hair. Mm. And everybody got upset. Like, what does nice hair mean? And thought he was being colorist against dark skinned women and all that kind of stuff. Didn't, as he, well. didn't he just say, like, fuck y'all? And he was like, fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. He said, fuck y'all, basically, because he didn't. 
Because people started saying, like, he was being colorist against dark-skinned women. But he was like, one, I never said dark-skinned. I said black. Yeah. So you can be light-skinned and still be black. So fuck y'all, because that's what y'all thought. Mm -hmm. And I like what I like. So suck my dick, basically. I agree. <laughs> yep. Because I like black bitches with nice hair. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you don't, if it don't apply, it don't apply. Yep. Mm. Mm. Lenaz X in the Chris Brown debut at number one. Congratulations. Nipsey collaboration. Rick Ross dropped a freestyle. It's <laughs> <laughs> dry out here. <laughs> oh, we Ain't nothing happening. The, uh, the Daniel Caesar, you know, we just talked about the album. You we talking about how we weren't sure whether or not, uh, like, people were still upset. Yeah. But so we was like, mm, we mm -hmm. thought the album was pretty good, decent, or good at least. Mm -hmm. But we hadn't really heard nobody talk about it. But you said you saw reviews. Well, yeah, reviews and they weren't about right. the music. They was still mad. Yeah, it's the, like the general consensus is that the album is okay, but it ain't the first one. So that's <laughs> okay. it. that's not that's that's number one. <laughs> and then secondly, a lot of people keep bringing up the whole, you know, the shit that he said about what's her name. Uh, Free jewels, 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 because yeah. she was wearing clothes that said "nigger" on it. Yeah, and how we were being mean to white people and all, all that kind of thing. And people brought up, um, well, publications were bringing up certain lyrics, like the song that you like. Mm -hmm. They say there was some uh, misogynistic lyrics in that. What? what? They were saying that it was um, some about um, I'd like to breathe. Uh, I'm not a monster. Oh, I'm not a monster. I'm just a man with I'm needs. I'm just a man with needs. And people took offense to that. Like, oh, because you're a man, you get to have sex with women and impregnate them, and it's just who you are. And it's like, I don't know. Well, That's just what I what, what I read. Yeah. I mean, I people get how you okay. people pick that shit apart. <laughs> and I think they wouldn't have done that if he hadn't said what he said. Yeah. Because yeah. that's it. You're reaching for that. Yeah. Because I love that song. It's a great. It's a I great stand song. Behind that song. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That song is amazing. I put that shit on repeat. And it's a go. it's a great that's song. A great song. And it's crazy. You know what else is frustrating? Is like this album is one of the ones that didn't even bother me. Like I liked the album. And there's songs on it that I play, but niggas talking like it's just all right. Well, what the hell? What do y'all want? What do you want? <laughs> this is like, I don't I don't get it. And I, that's why I keep saying, maybe I'm old and I'm out of touch. Because it's like, I, the shit I like, people act like don't exist. Is there anything that came out recently that you liked, but like was also, I guess, critically acclaimed that people like to? No. I other than, other than the uh, Anderson Pack joint, maybe. I can't even think of what came out recently. Let me see. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Because music sucks. That's why. Music <laughs> is... Now, I know that music has always been business. But it's like well, maybe because I'm older and I see it for, for what it is. That's all I see now. It's just people trying to make money. There's no there's no creativity. No way. Like, nowhere. Like, I'm, I'm so done with music. Period. I ain't putting nothing else out. I'm just going to start <laughs> gigging. You, you heard this first. Uh-oh. I'm not putting out no more music on Spotify. On none of that. Because then, you know what's so frustrating, too? People yeah. wait until it ain't there. <laughs> and then oh. Because I took uh, till they uh, till they know down. Because it's been up too long. Because, like, I'm just... And plus, like, it's, there's some mixing things that I've I've grown from. So, I'm like, I'm listening to it. It don't, it don't sound like I, you know, would... Like, if someone listened to me for the first time, it's not... You want them to base you off that? Yeah, I don't want you to base me off but of that. But they should be able to see, like, this was released... In people don't care about that whatever. people don't care about that i've i've literally i've played older projects and be like hey this is older but no one cares it's just like well it's new to me <laughs> so it's like <laughs> which touche, is fair. you know yeah That's fair. but yeah i'm not i'm not putting no and if i do maybe i'm 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 saying too much but i gotta i gotta get with you i mean you have every right to change your right mind. i i gotta get with you about creating just my own online store. So if I do put, you know, yeah, music you out, I'll just put it there. I'm not giving Spotify no more goddamn money. I'm not giving <laughs> iTunes no more money. They don't they don't help me, therefore they don't deserve me. So I'ma just I'ma have my own store. So if you want to listen. How does Bandcamp work? Does Bandcamp take a percentage? Yes, people they do. Still use it? Oh, okay. I told you I got <laughs> a dollar, I got <laughs> seventy three cent back. <laughs> from Bandcamp? From Bandcamp, yep. Yeah. I'm from based Bandcamp. off what? Like does it tell you like what they get from you, or does it just tell well, you? Well, yes, what I you guess get? whatever a dollar minus 74 cents is, that's what they get. That's hmm. 26 cents, something like that. Yeah. And you, oh, okay. Hmm. So you do the math on that. Yeah. As opposed to me just, you know, and you can just go to a, just one space. Like if you want to listen to everything, Corey, everything's right there. 
And you know what else I've I've noticed too? People don't listen to you if you if you have a certain amount of like followers, they just assume that you trash. If you don't have like a million followers like something like like that, they scroll past you. But you said you stop listening to people once they have a hundred. <laughs> Cause so. fuck y'all, that's why. That's why. <laughs> when I found that out, I was like, okay. All right. Well, fuck you too. Well, that's why niggas is out here buying followers and shit. You can pay niggas on SoundCloud to boost your shit. I don't. I ain't doing that. You know, I mean, I, not, but I'm, that's why people I have do morals. It. Come on now. I have ethics. But you know still, people like, that do that. I'm not ooh. gonna say no names. I mean, hey, but mm. but still. <laughs> so yeah, I might. I, so it's not like I'm not. I'm always writing. I can't help it. I have to write. It's yeah. who I am. But I'm. I'm not releasing it the way that I've been. And remember, I said I won't put no more goddamn mixtapes out. Mm-hmm. I said that back in. Anti, I said after after mm. anti, I'm not dropping no more mixtapes. And guess what? I didn't. I dropped the EP, but it wasn't a mixtape. <laughs> See, that's the that nuance. So it's a mixtape. <laughs> we just talked about that because Chance put out six albums and told us they was mixtapes, and now we waiting for his I first fell album. In, I fell into the trap of calling my albums <laughs> mixtapes. Because albums were supposed to see that's the thing. Albums were supposed to be monumental moments and events. Ooh. So when you just drop something, it was like, well, if it flopped. It's like oh well, well it was that, that didn't count. That was just right. Like, so I was, think that's ultimately what that what that is. That's how like. people are releasing those like the two packs now. You do like a two track EP mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. They just here's two songs together, real right? Quick. Right. But I'm not doing none of that shit no more. So the last song that y'all got is the last song y'all getting. Like we got. Unless y'all want to go to the website, because because mind you, I'm starting to gig more. I'm starting to put my own shows together mm-hmm. where I'm selling CDs. So I could make money. Mind you, it's not all about money. But still, it's just like <laughs> yes, it is. this is this this is how I feel like I would be. I'll be able to kind of set myself apart and not be as frustrating. Feel like I'm. Um, it's like a it's it's I, I, rat races at the tip yeah. of my tongue. But it's like I'm it's like I'm competing with everybody. My this man, is not yeah. what this has ever been for me. I do it because I enjoy doing it. So to get back to that, I'm going to just start doing my own shows, putting everything on my own website. Hosted by someone else, yes, but at least I own everything on because <laughs> that's the best I could do. Yeah. But just doing it that way, and then whatever new music y'all want to hear, just type in Choreo.com instead of Spotify, and you get the same shit. You can stream it there, you can buy it there, that's you can order the thing, it. People, CDs. people at this, people are lazy. That's the craziest thing, and people want convenience. Well, guess so what? If your shit is not where they have they shit, like especially streaming, like I mm-hmm. stream music from this. Mm-hmm. If it's not in here, I'm not leaving my streaming app to go here to that's how just people are well, lazy. I say fuck you then. Cuz if you <laughs> if you can't go to coriel.com, if you can't go to my Twitter, right? And go to the top where my website is and click on it. You can kiss my ass. Cuz people even mess it up cuz I used to I used to do that. Like if there was music like kind of obscure over here mm-hmm. that I liked I would download it and kind of add it to my mix of music I already had together. Because mm-hmm. I know was the Google Play app lets you do that. Like you can stream your music, but you can also like mix in m- f- music that you've downloaded with that. Mm-hmm. But title, and I don't think Apple Music lets you do that either. Like if it's not in the thing, you can't access it unless you leave and go somewhere else. Whatever. So y'all can buy merchandise. <laughs> Y'all can buy the songs Call from the actual and website. Hats and mugs coming soon. You damn right. <laughs> I'm I, I'm being completely as self sufficient as I possibly can. That's that's the wave. That's yep. what we do here. That's what I'm saying. I ain't, there's there's no more. Stop stop asking me how many followers I got because I'm not. I don't care. I'm not building none of that shit. I'm just saying <laughs> what I what I want, and whoever wants to gravitate to it can. Because I gravitate to things that I enjoy, and I don't care about the numbers of followers that they have. You just if you make quality content, and I'm aware of it, I'm going to support. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. It. So I feel like if I'm putting that energy out, I should be able to get that energy back. Bars. Plus it. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you all. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. This is more of a free. Right we didn't know what we were going to talk it's about. Type thing, type show. Right. But I think it went well. It's just like a, it's like a regular conference we have in the house anyway. So so shout out to all the support. Yeah, we got a couple likes and views don't and comments today. So appreciate it. Appreciate uh, earlier. Earlier might be better. Earlier might be better. You might come to the scene. They said, P on the beat. Now let the story be. Well, this has been an outside perspective on the mic show. That's Coriel. Catch us on Spotify. HLA. Not me. Well, the, 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 the radio show. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not his personal music. Goodbye. We out of here. I'm doing the yup, yup. Every thought I had, now I'm living the yup. The dreams I'm pursuing and the money is the hobby, but the bonus is the fast chilling in the hotel lobby. Uh.